yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, on a day or, where I'm Or just like your philosophy towards that day, whatever. Yeah. So if I am, it, it depends if I'm trying to lose fat or gain muscle. Like, yeah. it depends a lot on that. Um, but I currently am leaning out a little bit. So like my goal is fat loss. I strength train three days a week for like 45 minutes to an hour. And I try to get most of my calories for the day after that workout. Um, just because it's it's easier when I'm eating fewer calories to restrict them to like an eight or a 10 hour window versus eat five or six small meals a day. I'm just gonna end up getting hungrier. Like if I space them out like that and then late at night I'm gonna be like, oh shit, I really wanna eat all of this Ben and Jerry's but I only have 400 calories left. I'd rather be able to have a big meal at night. So high carb, lowish fat with moderate protein. And for me, I weigh about 180 pounds, so like 180 grams of protein, 350, 400 carb, and around 50 fat on a workout day. Yeah. Uh, so one of my friends, he was like big into working out and eating like the five, six small meals a day. And yeah, like yeah. Doing macronutrient dieting. Sure. So like what exactly is that and how does that, like, how is it different like if you're macronutrient dieting for bulking versus like cutting? Absolutely. All right, so we'll start with, you can be counting, so proteins, carbs, and fats are macronutrients. Those are the only three things other than alcohol that make up calories. Everything else you see on a nutrition label is either a vitamin or a mineral or like some random sweetener or something else, but none of those amount to the total number of calories. None of those have energy. So you can eat five or six or seven meals a day and count your macros. Aim for a specific, counting your macros just means trying to eat a specific number of proteins, carbs, and fats throughout the day. And you can do that eating twice a day or you can do that eating five or six or seven times a day. Now, if your goal is bulking versus cutting, or which is like bodybuilding bro, I wear super tight shirts lingo for <laughs> ab muscle gain fat, um, or ab muscle lose fat for most of us. Um, what, uh, what you would do is estimate your maintenance calories, or how many calories you're burning in a day. Um, and there's an equation that I can like send you to, actually if you want to Google it right now, Catch McArdle. Um, there's simpler ways to do it, which I actually don't really like that much, but using this website to calculate your basal metabolic rate, we're getting way too in depth right now. Um, but then like multiplying that by 1.3 to 1.4, Estimates like it's going to give you a ballpark of how many calories you burn a day. If you want to add muscle, you're going to have to eat more than that. I'd probably start with like 300 calories more than that. If you want to lose fat, eat less than that, somewhere around five or 600 calories, depending on how much you weigh, how fast you want to lose weight, how okay you are with like being super hungry all the time. If you don't like that feeling and trying to lose fat, maybe stay in like. You're not your best self. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, right. Tell people. Keep, keep the calorie deficit a little bit smaller. I also like for people who want to lose fat and don't want to lose muscle in the process, if that's a goal, I think that keeping protein high, not I think, like studies show that keeping protein high when in a deficit helps you retain muscle mass while losing body fat. So yeah, calorie balance um, or total calorie intake and the, the distribution of those macronutrients. Like contrary to popular belief, you actually want more protein when you're losing fat than if you're gaining muscle. And how do you like count out like, like you said? Yeah, like like how much is right for me kind of thing. Yeah, I guess like or, in or, general, or like for you or if I'm having like uh, broccoli, chicken, and rice. Cool. Like what is that equal? Is it like one 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 and then like? Oh gotcha, gotcha. So you would be, so you actually you actually gotta look Literally at. Literally right now. <laughs> so clean. Um, I would, you have to actually look up, the, so the first four to six weeks of counting macros sucks. It's really not fun and like it's very tedious. You're gonna spend like 13 minutes after every meal being like, what did I eat? How many ounces was that? I don't really know, I have to estimate. Um, but you're gonna look at the individual macros for each of those foods. So if you have a chicken breast, you can weigh it or you can look at a picture on the internet like what does four ounces of chicken look like? Oh, that's about four ounces. Oh, that's about six ounces. Chicken breast, six ounces, Google's gonna have a nice thing in the sidebar, or you can go to nutritiondata.com, or you can download an app like MyFitnessPal, which has a food database, and you can use that, and it will say like, four ounces of chicken breast, 24 protein, one fat, zero carb, and then that is like 
those are the macros in that piece of food. You do the same thing for broccoli, you do the same thing for like a pizza and your Ben Jerry's and whatever else. What do you think about Weight Watchers? I actually, I've never done it. Um, I think the point system is a, a cool way to try to simplify things for people, um, but I actually don't, like my assumption is that it is primarily calorie based, so you could reach your point level. I'm, I'm just speculating, I don't actually know. Um, I think they rejiggered it to be like a little bit more did they? and not just the calorie focused, but not zero. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's all trying to accomplish the same thing, right? Which is, if you want to lose fat, you need to be in a deficit. You should be eating ample fiber and vitamins and minerals via fruits and vegetables and good whole foods. Um, and like it's packaging, everything in fitness is packaging that in a way that gets you results, but like their shtick is the point. So I would prefer you just learn how to count macros. What are you gonna do a fitness day for us? A fitness day? Yeah. When are we, like, should we like start a, working out right now? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you should do one of those like a park workouts. We oh, I love that. Yeah, we put you on a stage and then we'll. Or we all just yeah. wear like and, fitness but, and you like fitness gear and you just take us around in tours of the park. Let me ask why though. Like, is this for like like on a Monday like to get super excited and be like, all right, this is day one of my fitness kickoff and this is gonna be all this motivation. And let's go. Or is it because you think? that me leading a really good workout is going to provide excellent value. I think both. Oh. For me, I think it if, if it's the latter, that's not true. Like, one workout, no matter what <laughs> workout I give you, like, doesn't matter. Just if, be clear, if, Mike if, has no value. If you, like, if you do, like, a fine workout and you stick to it three days a week, 35 minutes for a year, you're going to see amazing results compared to trainer kicking your ass super hard, super sweaty, like, felt so wiped out, I was sore for a week, and then you know, the next week you don't want to do it because oh, that kind of sucks and you fall off. Or even if you do that for three months and then the rest of the year is whatever. I would rather you do something pretty good consistently. Yeah, but me, what if you have, an, what if we contribute as an office <laughs> to a day of your week mm -hmm. and you take us in, we all wear fitness gear to work, you take us in shifts, we each book an hour, we're all in an hour group based on our goals. And then it's okay. a weekly activity that's supposed to help jumpstart our week. Maybe it's like a Monday. Mm -hmm. We all wear fitness gear to work. And, um, and we I love I love you guys, but I don't love you to the point of committing like a day per week for eternity. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Even if we pull, like yeah. office pool? I mean, <laughs> sounds like sure. something we can explore later. Yeah. Sarah had a question. <laughs> <laughs> the moderator jumps in. Sure, let me redivert to an acceptable topic. Um, so you that said, I'm just kidding. Um, you talked earlier about doing like <clears throat> one workout consistently. And that actually was a question I submitted because my day at the gym is like, okay, uh, I know how to do these 20 things. Yeah. That thing's open and that thing's open, or like it's empty and I can try this new thing on Pinterest. I saw on Pinterest without looking like an idiot, so I'll do that today. Like, uh -huh. that's why I, I think like, my workouts yeah. like have varying levels of consistency. Mm -hmm. How important is it to do or not do the same workout or to have like back days, leg days, all of this stuff? So I think mixing it up is a good thing both psychologically and keep it fun and fresh and keep you motivated. Um, and also physiologically, like muscle confusion, the way that you might hear about it on an infomercial, change your workout every two and a half weeks, otherwise you're gonna plateau and like all the bad things are gonna happen. That's not really true, but there is still upside to changing the order that you do things. Um, if you usually squat first, or let me give you a better example. For a guy who wants to like bench a lot, they'll usually do a bench press first thing, and then they'll do an incline bench press and some other things. But it's good to throw that incline bench press on first in the workout, just because you're stronger, um, you're gonna be able to lift more at that exercise, your central nervous system's in better shape. So what I would normally do is put your number one priority, whether that's like body part or the, the exercise you wanna get the best on, early, if not first, in your workout. What you're describing, um, I feel like is even too unstructured, meaning like there's 20 exercises and you like to mix it up and do them all in whatever order. Mm -hmm. I would want to make sure like you're doing a, like a, a bend or like a hip down and move, working your glutes and hamstrings, like a deadlift or a Romanian deadlift or, or something like that. Um, a squat, a knee dominant exercise, some kind of push, some kind of pull, and making sure you're doing all those so even if like 
you could be doing six different things and mixing up the order and like they look cool, but you might be overlooking a specific move. I'm pretty sure I always look super cool at the gym. <laughs> oh, I bet you look cool. I'm not like I never I'm not knocking that. So there's like a few different like it sounds like categories of things that even if you're changing them up or doing them in different orders, you should yep. be sure to hit those. Yeah. What are they? Can you yeah, so so, the, so there's so there's seven moves. Um, essentially, a a squat and a deadlift, which are like a knee dominant leg move and a hip dominant leg move. A vertical and horizontal push, so like pressing something this way, pressing something over your head, pulling those same two things, pulling like this, pulling down, um, and then a carry or like holding weight, core is engaged. Like a farmer's carry, for example, where you're walking with weight. You know, Try it again. No, I just don't know what that is. Oh, you That's pick up two dumbbells carry. and you just walk as far oh, as you okay. can. Are you guys all doing <laughs> farmer's carries? Should I be doing this? I like it. I was in the gym. I'm like, where are you going with those weights? <laughs> where are you going? Yeah, I know that. Keep in mind, what we're talking about right now is <laughs> specifics and getting stronger, too. Like, Emily, for example, does one or maybe sometimes two strength training workouts where she'll do like a knee dominant lunge and a squat and some upper body work. But while like she, she all, yeah, while watching skin. While watching skin. Mm. Yeah. But there's also like, yeah. like you can add cardio in there. Strength doesn't have to be everyone's primary goal. So you don't have to be squatting, deadlifting, lunging, doing all this stuff 45 minutes, three days a week. But there should be some strength work in your program. What I would say is to, to work in more of or like work the basics into every workout cool so um, i was curious so from what you just answered her question mm -hmm. like so why did you see those things where people are like oh it's like that <coughs> with arm bless you oh like, why is there that came out of bodybuilding culture in the 1990s like you can see i think it was like the 90s but like it's it's most popular in bodybuilding culture um what what you're doing is when you're doing one sore and you take six days to recover your chest until the next time you hit chest. If instead of that, you worked upper body on two of your days a week and you did some chest one day and some chest the other day, um, you're going to be able to progress faster. You're going to like not be so wasted that you can't recover. Splitting that volume up is actually better. The reason it was popular is because bodybuilders, well, I mean, they you, <laughs> easy to remember. It's sort of like, oh, today's big oh, bodybuilder. Yeah. Yeah. But like, no, I'm not judging them. I'm just saying for me. So. A, lot, a, lot of, a lot of drug use. And like when you're, when you're training like that, you're going to make awesome progress no matter what you're doing. So if, if you're like shooting stuff in your veins and you work your legs once a week and then you wait a week to work them again, they're going to grow no matter what. But I mean, we're talking like, like magazines you see in the store, right? Like at, at the checkout. Giant dude, veins everywhere, like 240 pounds of mass, no fat. That's, yeah, that's drug use. Yeah, could you dispel the myth that lifting will automatically make you this terrifying monster? Yeah, it won't. There you go. <laughs> I mean, it just straight There is a great list of buzzing about lifting and like all the myths of like women. Good. Yeah. How it's like, oh, you're gonna get huge, and then it's like a picture of her. That's amazing. Plus, he added value. My husband makes fun of me for doing the elliptical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. That was it. What else? What else do you do? Um, I do 30 minutes on the elliptical. Cool. How many days a week? Like three. And what else? That's it. Yeah, it makes like it's back to the I ROI and like what what fits. What do you want to do? I want to lose weight. Okay. Um, you're you're not burning very many calories there. You could like you could like literally when like Lizzie Vaynerchuk brings cupcakes in and they're like this big, you could literally not have one of those and save two of those half hour sessions because going on the Olympic really? like that for thirty minutes is probably like it's completely dependent on the person. So you think running is better? Better than the elliptical, yes, but better than making dietary adjustments. Um, to get your energy balance more where it should be, no, like that's going to be way more efficient than trying to compensate for a bad diet with exercise or like you know dietary flaws with exercise. Sean, who wants to know your thoughts on fasting diets to create calorie deficits when you're cutting? Oh. Love it. I adore it. It's what I like. You translate like that into English? Yeah. Huh? What fasting is? Oh, gotcha. So not eating any calories. Like you can drink water, you can have coffee, you can have tea, you can even have like some artificial sweeteners or like a, a diet soda is probably fine um, for a period of time. The most popular fasting diet is called 
lean gains or the 16-8 method um, in which you don't eat for 16 hours a day and then you eat during eight. But like, if we think about this, I used to hate this. Like, I tried it multiple times before I could get it to work because I loved breakfast. I ate eggs and oatmeal every day for breakfast for like seven straight years. Um, and I was very much not giving that up. Once I did and it clicked because I had water and caffeine in the morning and then that combined with some of the hormonal impacts of fasting actually caused like from 7 a.m. or whenever you wake up until noon, you're going to be hungrier when you wake up than you are, obviously there's a curve. So at 10 a.m. if you're super caffeinated, your appetite's going to be suppressed pretty well um, from that caffeine. Then like start eating at lunch, make that your first meal of the day. It doesn't have to be eight hours if you want to have a late dinner and it's nine or 10 hour window that you're eating in. Um, the major benefit here is lifestyle. Like it allows you to have more calories at night, happy hour, like dinners, things like that. If you have 850 calories to play with rather than 450, it's gonna make your, your life a lot easier. Um, so yeah, I am pro fasting like I don't know, Sean, do I know Sean? He works in our LA office. Um, if, like, if, like, right if like muscle, yeah, yeah, I know, I get that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, yeah. Oh, no. what's up, we can hear you guys? I mean, we could hear you guys. I mean, you could hear us if you want to hear us. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little exhibit. That's so crazy. <laughs> um, one of the myths associated with fasting type diets is that you're going to lose muscle as well, but keeping protein high enough, even in that window, and then um, you can supplement with branch chain amino acids during the fasting period. If you really want to, it's probably not necessary, but strength training a couple days a week, three days a week, and getting enough protein, probably like one to 1.3 grams per pound of body weight is going to allow you to lose fat without losing muscle and follow up a, a intermittent fasting type diet. Is that like a lifestyle or is that just something you do for a purpose? Um, Why would you, that's to cut calories? It, what, it, what it really is, is to make being in a deficit easier. Like some, some people who, if you spread it out over 16 hours, you get late in the day and you're just, yeah. right? So it's, it's to get a bigger dinner, um, like assuming that you can use coffee or water or whatever, or just like willpower in the morning <coughs> to be super productive and not be worried about being hungry. Is this good for weight loss? Yeah, being in a deficit is, is good for weight loss, yeah. Part the, of the the whole, like, so part, part of the, the five meals thing comes from a component of our metabolism called the thermic effect of food, which we had online coaching clients who I tried this with, and after two weeks, like they gave it a shot, and they're like, I miss breakfast so much, like I would just rather eat breakfast and do that. Cool, I'm 100% fine with that, but some people just end up really liking it. So we're about to get kicked out. Uh -huh. I'm going to email the remaining questions to you. Okay. And you can send I'll, them I'll film them. them and send them out. If you guys have any yeah. suggestions of how you would like to make VaynerMedia more fit, email me and let me know. Boom. Do it.